Hello you guys and welcome back to this very easy violin etudes by Edward Elgar for violin and piano. I think it's called very easy melodious etudes in first position. Um, but you know what, even though it's easy, there's a lot of details for us to go over and that's why this is probably going to be kind of a longish video for you this week. Um, so etude C, this will be linked for you below. It's going to take you to the blessedimslp.org website, which you should definitely consider subscribing to. It's $2.99 a month. It's also free. You don't have to, but you should support IMSLP if you can. Um, excuse me while I itch my nose. Oh my gosh, there we go. Um, and we're going to take a look at Etude C today. So let's find that and grab a pencil because we're going to mark a bunch of things. Okay? So the first thing we're going to look at is, as usual, the key signature, the time signature, and then the tempo marking at the beginning. And then we'll go look through details and things. Um, so you can see there's no sharps and no flats in the key signature. There's nothing there. There's no sharps and no flats. Everything is natural. And that's going to help us figure out our hand pattern in a minute. So we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. The next thing is our time signature. The time signature is that little fraction at the top, three, four. So the upper number is telling you three, how many beats to count. So we're gonna count one, two, three. So there's three beats in a measure. And the four is telling you what the beat is equal to. So is this a quarter note, an eighth note, a sixteenth note, a half note? What is this beat that I'm feeling? If it's a four on the bottom, it's a quarter note, all right? So the other rhythms besides quarter notes we have to deal with are eighth notes. And eighth notes are twice as fast. One and two and three and one and two and three and, right? It's very evenly divided. So if you can human metronome like I am, feel your beat. And then just use your hand to subdivide in eighth notes. One and two and three and all right so um andante is telling us how fast this beat is is it one two three one two three or is it one two three so andante is kind of around 72 i always like to think of andante around 72. it's also the vibe like andante just feels like just happy and content and just kind of moving along and you know, all is well. So here is 72. It's a little bit faster than we were feeling. One, two, three. One and two and three and one and two and three and. All right, so let's take a look at our rhythms because we have kind of a complicated rhythm. We've got a dotted rhythm. So a dot adds half of whatever it's next to. So what is half of a quarter note? It's an eighth note. So this gets held for three eighth notes, one and two, one and two and three and, one and two and three and. So if you want to write the counting above that, it's one and two over the dotted quarter note and over that little eighth note it's slurred to, and then on the last two, three and, one and two and three and and one and two and three and one and two and three and okay so that rhythm is basically there with us for the entirety of this little etude um so that's that's one one very important and slightly confusing thing about this etude the other thing kind of a side note with this one and actually in any time signature is the fact that beat one is really important and usually our important rhythms tend to be a little bit longer. It's not always the case, but you can definitely see beat one always has that dotted quarter note there. One and two and three and. But the rhythms and the, sorry, not the rhythms, but the bowings, the bowings might actually kind of shake that up a little bit and it might actually end up sounding like one and two and three and one and two and three and so what i'm saying is beat three actually might end up being a little bit louder 
which we don't want, but just to demonstrate. There goes my shoulder rest. Need to <laughs> secure this with rubber bands. I just forgot to do that. Um, this is what we don't want to have happen. Listen, see if you can hear this. I'm going to emphasize beat three. Right, it sounds a little bit weird, but if I emphasize beat one and de-emphasize the other ones, it kind of makes more sense. But it's hard to do that because you really have to control how much bow you use because we have a longer rhythm on the down bow and then a shorter rhythm on the up bow. So in order for me to come back to where I started, I have to use a lot of bow and we don't wanna to have to do that. So you're gonna conserve on your down bow, save. That way you don't have to really travel very much for those ones, save. Let's write save over that um, first little two note slur there. Just save your bow. That way your um, beat three isn't like stuck with a lot of bow. And we do need to come back to where you start because if you don't on your up bows, see what happens if I don't come back to where I start? Each up bow is not really taking me back to where I start. So I'm gradually migrating towards the tip versus back on the up bow, back to where I started. I start here, I'm going to return here. Okay, so it's, it's tricky, it's tricky. Let's put that thought on the back burner for a minute and we're going to talk about the dynamic. I told you this would be quite a long video. Do you have your cup of tea? I need a, I need a cup of tea after this. Um, so let's inspect and take a look at those dynamics there. So piano, piano is the very first dynamic. That's P. Piano is like a whisper, so you're gonna be very quiet at the beginning. And the way that we're gonna achieve the dynamics, there's many different ways that we can achieve dynamics. Um, we're going to just focus on how much bow you're using, but some other detail or other things you could kind of incorporate in the future are your contact point. Do you want to be playing closer to the bridge, which tends to be louder or further from the bridge, which tends to be quieter? You could also experiment with how much weight you're using. A heavier bow is a heavier sound. A lighter bow is a lighter sound. You could experiment also with your bow hair. Do you want to use flat hair? Or do you want to use like one little hair, you know, roll the bow away and use very flat hair or very, um, just like one little hair, for example, versus flat hair. Um, what are some other things that you could, your bow speed, right? Um, if you have weight and speed, it's going to be really loud, right? If you have no weight and you have to use speed, that could still be kind of quiet and give you like an airy sound, depending on where you are. There's all sorts of things that you can experiment with, like for colors and effect and everything. But like I said, we're just gonna be focusing on, for the dynamics, the amount of bow that you're using. Okay, you might naturally kind of lighten up the weight when it's quiet and apply more weight as it gets louder. So feel free to do that too. But anyway, the majority of this piece is actually gonna be whispering. It's quite a whisper, it's quite a, cool, a quiet piece. The second line begins with a crescendo and a crescendo is going to incrementally get louder. And it happens very quickly. We're gonna to get to forte, which is like a projecting very loud kind of voice. So you're gonna be really loud and we're gonna sustain that forte until you get suddenly to whisper again. So it's called subito, subito piano or subito forte, it's where it happens. Suddenly it's louder, suddenly it's quieter. So you gotta just kind of immediately drop down there on the piano. Then after that, at the end of the second line, we've got another crescendo, but it doesn't say how loud to get. Um, it just 
you know, kind of tapers at the end. So let's just come up a little bit. Let's just come up to our speaking voice. So we're going to go from whispering up to speaking, and then we'll come back down to whispering. Okay. And then music theory nerd moment. There is a double bar at the end of the third line. There's a double bar there. The double bar is telling you these are two different sections. And there's a weird little upside down looking um, a down bow written there. And that's um, maybe that's like a European way of writing a down bow. I don't know. It's um, down bows are usually like looking like this for us here in America. Um, but elsewhere, I've also seen the upside down one. So that's just an upside down. We're going to have to retake the bow. So if you want to write retake the bow there. Um, and we're still on piano. The fourth line begins with a crescendo. It doesn't tell us how loud we're going to get. So let's just come up a little bit. Let's just come up to mezzo forte again. So just right up to your speaking voice. And then we have a very quick um, decay to piano again, which we're going to stay piano for a little while. And then in the second to last line, we've got a forte, uh, sorry, a crescendo to forte. And then we have a sforzando in the next measure. That's the SF. And a sforzando is like a little extra whack, like a little extra zzz. Um, that you're going to apply to that note there. And then we quickly decay back to piano. Last line, we've got a crescendo to mezzo forte, decay to piano. And then we have a retard at the end, which just starts to get slower. And we're not going to really hear that very much. That's probably going to be more controlled by the piano. And then just like in the second um, etude, we got a little fermata there. So the piano is going to hold that rest and then it's over. All right. So, oh my goodness, all the details. Um, you can see there's some fingerings in there. There's some fourth fingers. There's some open strings. So try and catch as many of those details as you can. We're going to play this on the slower side. So we're not going to start at 72. Let's start it at, let's try it at 50. I think 50 would probably be a good speed. All right, do you remember your hand patterns? Basic on the G string, low two on the middle two strings, and low one, all whole steps on the E string. We're in three, four, one, two, three, one and two and three and da, dun, 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 dun. We're gonna emphasize beat one, Bum, 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 bum. All right, try not to do. Try not to do that, okay? <laughs> All right. Oh, let's put our bow on the string and maybe we start in the middle because we don't need to start the frog. It's quiet. It's more naturally quiet in the upper part of the bow anyway. So let's just kind of get situated there. Get your hand pattern ready. Let's start to lengthen your breath. I'm going to count to three two times. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Back down. 
you had a little retard there. All right. Oh my gosh, I have a little tip for you in the left hand. Can we look at the last line? One, two, three, four, five, six, line six. At the end of line, sorry, the beginning of line six. The beginning of line six we do. And then we go to this note. And then we go right back to this note. So I'm gonna leave my second finger on both of these strings like a double stop right here and you see how my arm is the one that's doing that it's pulling the finger it's not the finger doing this by itself it's this whatever the notes are so anyway little little trick there shall we try it as uh as written for andante let's let's jump up to 72 so see if you can catch this. This is going, you're gonna have two weeks to work on this, but just in case you wanna give another try, here is 72. All right, you guys. So let's get ready to go. Just start to lengthen your exhales and lengthen your inhales and just relax. Get ready. One and two and three and one and two and three and. just really has a hard time with that. I have a hard time with that, <laughs> especially going from violin and viola. But I think one of the ways that I can kind of deal with that is by kind of trying to anticipate the bow change. I kind of have to be like extra vigilant about changing string crossings for my E string. My E string doesn't like to do a fast string crossing, you know, so there goes my shoulder rest. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching this one, Music Theory Moment. There is a light and dark side for each key signature, so we could either be in C major or A minor for this one. Does this one sound more like it's major, or is it more dark and minor sounding? It's minor. It's in A minor for this one. I wasn't sure if you um, maybe thought about that, but anyway. I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for being here with me today. It's time for a cup of tea and I'll see you all very soon. Lots of love.